people of the internet this is Scott with CircWorks Art Labs asking you once again to please join me in my underground laboratory where our mission is to create copious amounts of aliens robots zombies and other imminent threats to humanity or imminent threats to miscrit because what is the biggest threat to miscrits other miscrits that's all they do that's all they seem to do is like battle each other so if you've been following this series, you'll know that we completed our first evolution of our Miskrit that we're trying to get into the Miskrit game by Broken Bulb Studios. And in order to do that, we can't just give them just one miss, one evolution. We have to give them all four. And I had asked you guys to, uh, if you wanted to see more of, of this Miskrit, if you want us to continue on, to please do subscribe. And we got a lot of new subscribers, so I'm thinking, well, let's give this thing a shot. Let's let's take it to the next level and create our second evolution to this Miskrit. Now, if you haven't been following, or if you just want a refresher, I am going to show you what we came up with. I'm going to pop that up right here. As you can see, that is our first evolution Miskrit, which right now we are calling, I think we're calling it Manio, but that could change. Um, and we've got some different suggestions and ideas and things like that for for what we can call it and we've got and I've got some interesting uh, feedback and some things that that you guys suggested that I might want to incorporate into this creature because of some really good ideas so we'll talk about that more if we don't talk about this that on this episode we'll talk about it on a future episode because there's some cool ideas that I think would really work and that's the cool thing about creating uh, creating these creatures and doing this kind of online and everything and getting your feedback so it's like we're kind of we're, we're kind of it's like a group effort like I'll, I'll throw out some ideas and then I'll get some back and we can kind of as we as we go on with each evolution hopefully we can kind of incorporate some of that stuff now obviously we, won't, we don't want to go on off on any crazy tangents but there are some ideas that I really like that I think will fit into kind of what we've already established which is cool so what we're going to do now is we're going to start once again kind of back where we started off we did the first video in this series was sort of an intro then the second video was a sketching where we just took uh you know basically where everything starts with a blank piece of paper so we take this blank piece of paper or for more comfortable creating your work uh, digitally you know in the computer and everything whether you're using Photoshop or SketchUp or something like you know whatever kind of you know program you use to sketch or you can do it by hand like I do um, so we're gonna do that once again but we're gonna we're gonna be thinking of what's the next stage you, sh you saw what we already had so what what are we gonna do how do we evolve this how do we change this now usually the miscrits are gonna get bigger and more powerful that's always kind of that's kind of a given so we're definitely going to do that um, but let's see what else we come up with so without any further delay let's sit down right here at the art desk and we are going to start sketching our evolution two of our miscrit so to the art desk so here we are we are now situated at our art desk we've got our blank sheet of paper and uh, our drawing tools out and we're beginning to to work our sketch and we start we start really lightly at least at least I do um, now uh, I guess I should talk a little bit about the tools I use because I get a lot of a lot of requests um, a lot of times from beginning artists wanting to know what what uh, you know what what tools I use now um, I'm gonna go ahead and preface this by saying that you know you can you can ask whatever artist what tools they use and and you can try them out and I like to do that too if I see if I see an artist and they've got a, a cool tool that maybe I haven't seen um, tool meaning pens or pencils or, or whatever you know artist utensils um, and I'm I'll look at that and I'll go, oh that looks cool I'll try that out so so I definitely understand that but I think uh, sometimes beginning artists think that um, that if they use the same tools that maybe a professional artist uses or somebody that's been established or been doing this for a while, um, that somehow it's going to make their work better, and that's not really the case. Um, 
again, these are just tools. They're just an extension of your own skills, your own talents, whatever you want to call it, your own practice and everything. And that's what it is. I mean, it's it all it all starts with with practice, and you got to keep doing this. I mean, I've you know I've been drawing since I was a kid, and you know, and it some and it does some, sometimes it seems like it does come easier for some people. I know a lot of people way younger than me who are way better artists, and um, but you know if you know if it comes harder to you then you just got to push harder and that's all there is to it um, but you really have to have a passion for it you have to keep keep at it and keep you know keep working at it and you will get better I mean there's nobody that 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 draws and draws and draws and doesn't get better or it whatever whatever you know you're doing whether you're playing sports or whatever it's all practice um, it doesn't it do, it just doesn't like automatically just appear like magic like a lot of people might think so anyway so let's talk about about the tools i use now in the beginning of the intro you saw me hold up a, a blue pencil that's not actually the the one that I, I typically draw with um the one that you're seeing now on screen is a drafting pencil and when i first started off my first professional job before i started getting into designing mad science and you know sitting in the art lab and doing all that kind of stuff I worked at an architectural firm working in their graphic design department and also doing doing renderings of buildings and things like that so uh, a lot of the the people there used these pencils and they're 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 usually reserved for for you know people who do drafting um, and this is bef this is a long time ago <laughs> again before computer aided drafting and everything so um, they were all using these so that's the supplies they they you know they would have for us um, so I started using it and I just I, I ended up liking it now now it's it looks a little like a mechanical pencil the ones that you have the, the those real thin leads and then you click on them and they come out it doesn't work exactly like that um, and I'll I'll put a link to I'll put a link to the the supplies that I'm that I'm using that I'm talking about right now in the uh, in the um, description of the YouTube video so um, they come the, the leads are, are a little thicker than those mechanical pencils and the mechanical pencils come in different thicknesses but in general they're they're quite a bit thicker probably about you know four or five times maybe more than that thicker and, and you can kind of see it just just by looking at it um, but the lead holder it just you basically push the button at the end you like insert these leads and the thing is it the the main difference is that you have to use a special pencil sharpener and it, it's like a weird thing and I actually had a, there was another artist that, that that I talked to online and everything who I guess his girlfriend picked up one of one of these pencil sharpeners and he didn't really know what it was <laughs> so it's it, it's kind of a weird thing because what it is it's got a little um, like I don't know what you call it like flint or something whatever it is that you use to like sharpen knives um, it's got inside it has it has a little round um, a round thing like that and basically what the sharpener does what is you stick you stick it in the top there's there's a little hole you stick it in and then you just kind of wind it around and what it does it rubs that um, it rubs the lead around this this um, sharpening uh, device I guess you can call it I, maybe I'm getting too technical here, but anyway, like I said, I'll post all that stuff uh, online. You can you can try them out. Um, another thing that I'm not using here, but I use a lot are, are Pintel or not Pint. Sorry. Um, well, I did I mention the brand name? So yeah. So anyway, um, the lead holders can be any kind of drafting lead holders. I don't really. It's, it's, there's not really a certain brand or whatever. Statler makes a lot of them. I think that's the one that I use. Um, same thing with the pencil sharpener. There's a lot of those. Just a, 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 a you know a drafting lead pen or sharpener, I guess. Um, but the the leads, and this is something they didn't really have for uh, for me at the when I was you know working at this architectural firm. They you know they just had black leads, so that's what we had. But I discovered you can buy different color leads, and they're a little harder to find now because you know like I said, a lot of people you can find them on Amazon. So I mean, I guess if if you have access to the internet and the Amazon, um, which I think most people do, you can you can find those uh, online. And again, I'll put the the link up there. But uh, I found they have different uh, different color LEDs, and the one I like to use is a non-photo repo blue, 
And back in the day when uh, when they used to take camera shots of artwork before you know before we scanned stuff in or before way before digital and everything, um, we would work in this blue because when you go over it with uh, ink and you take and whether you're working in comics or whatever, and a lot of people still do work traditionally in comics, myself as well. When you take that, when you take that, what they call a photostat, is it's basically a, a black and white photograph. Um, the only thing that it sees is the is the line art, the ink that you go over it with, with whether you're using like microns or technical pens or pen and ink or or whatever, or brush and ink. Um, so it would, it just kind of gets rid of that blue. The blue doesn't photograph. So um, I just got in the habit of using that, and I like it because it's light. And when I scan it into the computer for our next step in this process. Um, because most of the line art that I'm using are darker lines. It doesn't get lost. Um, it, the, the blue is kind of light and everything, so it doesn't get lost. So I like to use that. So that's why I use these particular drawing tools. So I guess we should turn our attention back to the actual miscrit. We'll talk about what we're drawing here. So um, if you remember the first evolution, you'll know that around his gauntlets, around his wrist, he had a lot of these little light bulbs. So, um, and they were a little bit smaller. So now um, I decided that as he evolves, those little light bulbs are gonna kind of merge together and form bigger bulbs. Um, Cause I kind of like the, I, I like the idea of the, you know, if you've seen a lot of, like a lot of time when you draw f like fantasy characters or whatever, they'll have these around their wrists, they'll have these kind of giant bolts or whatever, or, uh, but, so I kind of like that, but I want these to be the, the, the light bulb. So that's one thing that happens as our creature evolves. As you look, as you can tell, he's getting a little bit fiercer. And um, one of the things that that I was told when I was doing this by, because I've, I've been talking to Broken Bulb and kind of letting them know what I'm doing and everything, and they've given me some feedback along the way, because, you know, again, our goal is to try to get this in the game. And the one thing that they said is recently, I, I guess the fan base has grown toward, I think, I think he said like like 80% male, 20% um, female. It could be even more male, which which is unusual because when we first started working on 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 these social games and when we first started working on Miscrits, we were going for a lot cuter creatures because. Um, all the games previous to that were like social games, and it had a very big female audience. So that's what we were kind of going for when we first started Miscrits. Is as we went, we found that that the male audience was was a lot bigger than the female audience, and I don't want to alienate the female audience, um, but and there's a lot of a lot of cute creatures, and again, I and and this is this is all you know, this is all you know, <laughs> I guess. Um, you know, I don't want to say stereotypes or whatever, but you know, like it, just because it's a larger male audience doesn't mean all the creatures have to be, you know, more ferocious and you know, and hardened and everything like that. Because I like cute, cute creatures and everything, and a lot of guys out there do too. Um, and a lot of females don't care about the cute creatures, so you know, you can you can take that all that information kind of with a grain grain of salt. Um, but anyway, in general, I guess now they want the creatures to be, you know, a little, a little more ferocious looking or, or you know, battle hardened or how, however you want to describe it. So that's kind of what we're doing. So um, my first creature was a little cute and I like to evolve it and everything. So, but that was something that I was told to be th thinking of. So as we go, the creature is going to get, uh, you know, bigger and badder and, you know, and something, you know, is kind of in that uh, in that progression. So, so anyway, um, so something to think about. The other thing that, and I know that it's not totally in the frame right now, but when I first when I was first talking about the um, designing the miscrit, I was saying we want to have them all sort of facing left, so they're facing each other. Um, and I probably shouldn't bring this up. Maybe I'll. I'll, I'll move the artwork down a little so we can see. Um, but you'll notice that he's, he, this creature is kind of facing the opposite direction. In some ways he is. His body's a little bit tilted um, to, the, to the right, but his head, is, his head is kind of cocked to the left 
And as we bring as we bring this into frame, we'll see that his eyes are actually facing left, and that's really important. So you can you can kind of twist your character in the other direction, but we want to make sure that that his focus where he's looking at um, is going to be off to the left. And again, we'll we'll see that as we go. Right now, we're just kind of filling in this this cape. Which started as sort of a scarf, and it's going to it's going to evolve into more of a, a big cape. And as you can see, before we had just the little pens, the little um, the uh, drama masks were just kind of pens that were kind of holding his scarf. Um, now they've kind of become shoulder pads. And as we move the 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 drawing down, now we can kind of see, like I was saying, his even though his body is is kind of facing the right his head's kind of turning over and looking towards the left so it'll work that way and, it, and that way it'll give us a different pose than what we had because um, we always want to we want to experiment with different poses we don't want to have um, and I've seen this I've, I've, I've seen this with a lot of people that are just starting off doing their miscrits it's kind of the one pose where they're kind of the the creature is kind of on its haunches and it's kind of just facing that direction and as it goes uh, as it evolves it's kind of the same thing it gets bigger and everything but it doesn't really that we want to try to work in some dynamic poses and really give some some character and everything um, to our miscrits and have some cool poses and you get that by just just starting and working with gestures which are, are these you know these basic shapes and kind of getting a feel using like circles and, and shapes and things to kind of figure out where our miscrit's going to be and then um, then we can go in you can see right now all I'm do, basically doing is just darkening things and kind of popping things out and uh, so we start off we want it to be very um, you know uh, just start drawing light and then we start filling in and everything like that and and then uh, it uh, will gradually start to take shape and everything like that and um, so that's how we end up doing things uh, so another thing we want to think about as we are designing our our miscrit and as it evolves is how how it evolves now in the beginning when we first started designing our miscrits uh, in the miscrit character before we really had established because it's sort of a learning process when you begin a game and everything sometimes it, it, it starts to um, go in other directions or certain things become more popular fans and you try to sort of um, swerve and 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 you know cater to, to that type of thing um, and one of the things uh, when we first started working on I, I would have creatures that would evolve almost like you know each miscrit is sort of based on one one or maybe two species of animals or something altogether different but I would have animals that would evolve from one kind of species of animals to another and um, one of the directions that they had us go they, they, they wanted us they wanted the evolution to be a little more subtle as we went so so you can kind of see if you compare this one to the previous version sure he's bigger you know he's now he's got his mouth open and he, he's snarling and everything and um, and certain things have changed like the, the bulbs around his arms and everything's um, the the drama mass have gotten bigger uh, the capes getting longer um, he's getting taller and everything and some of his his fur like because he's got this different color scheme on his fur that's kind of changed but but now what we're trying to do is make those changes a little more subtle. So, so it really does it look like an evolution because evolutions happen gradually. So that's what we're trying to do. So we don't want this big jump from you know, something that's like one thing to something that's altogether almost totally different. Like how did that? How did that happen? Because sometimes you can look at that and you could say, well, you know, you could almost fill in like a few evolutions in between those steps the way that we were doing it before. Um, but anyway, something to think about. So we want our evolutions to kind of be a little more gradual. So, um, so as you can see, so there's going to be some tiny, some some small changes. But in general, when you look at the first evolution and the fourth, there'll be a big difference there. And you'll see as we go. I've got some ideas what to do, and I'm going to talk about that. But anyway, thanks for following. Thanks for liking. I'll put some of those things I talk about in the comment description. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And I'll be back uh, hopefully next week with our next video. That is all. I'm <laughs> sorry.